Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In these last days, it's becoming increasingly challenging and difficult, and many believers are getting discouraged and depressed. Yet, we are meant to be people that have a shout of victory in us and a shout of joy. So join with me as I lay hold of how to get into the secret place and receive that shout with insight from Smith Wigglesworth. And I pray, Father God, as we cover this message with the blood of Jesus, that it will be a word in season that ministers to each person listening. I break off of them every spirit of discouragement and depression. And I declare, Father God, that the joy of the Lord is their strength. Let them be anointed with the oil of gladness, Father God, that oil that breaks every yoke. And I thank you, Father God, that your joy would produce strength in them for the battle, strength to stand, and strength to press on and endure in this late hour. Father, I thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray, and the church said amen. Now, look at this in Psalm 16, verse 11. You will make known to me the path of life. And I just want to stop there because in this late hour, we need to get into the secret place and hear from him. And that's the critical ingredient that we proactively come in and seek His face. We need to have that holy desperation in this hour. We need to hear what He has to say because He will make it known to us to go to the left or to the right and what to do in this hour. He is not absent. He's not far off. But He's a God who will not forsake us and He is with us in this late hour. And He goes on to say, in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand pleasures evermore. In your presence, it doesn't say there's a little joy, there's some joy, there's enough for today, but there's the fullness of joy. And in the secret place of His presence, He invites you and I to come in for there to be an exchange that we would cast off from us our discouragement, our depression, and we would receive His joy. It is not a happiness, but it is a divine spiritual joy. It comes from the Holy Spirit, and it's poured into our spirit, man. Smith Wigglesworth said, The word of life is to make you full of joy. Think about being full of joy, something naturally unattainable. We must remember that what is absent in the world is joy. The world has never had joy, and the world never will have joy. It desires it. It seeks it. And the only way to receive it is from the word from the Word and His presence. When the Holy Spirit meets with us in that secret place and breathes on the Word, that Word comes to life and it gets in us as the seed that meets the need. And it produces joy. It produces Him and it, and it brings forth that breakthrough in us. Smith Wiggles went on to say, Joy is not in the five senses of the world. Feelings are there. Happiness is there. But joy can only be produced where there is no alloy. The joy that we're talking about is not earthly. It is not limited to the things of this earth and held captive by your emotions, by your circumstances, and your situations. It is not temporal and fading, but it is something that's heavenly, spiritual, and therefore it is eternal. We are called to abide permanently in the secret place of His presence. Not just to look at Psalm 91 as some beautiful psalm, but rather it's to become our lifestyle of coming and making it our permanent abiding place. And as a consequence to abide under His shadow. In that microclimate, that place is radiating with His joy. And that is meant to get into us. We're supposed to receive it. And that joy should overtake us and consume us and fill us from the inside out to the place where you are overflowing the fullness, more than enough of His joy. On this earth, there is an alloy, something that is a mixture of something. Smith goes on to explain that a little better. Alloy means there is a mixture. In this world, there is happiness, but it is a mixture. Very often, it comes very close to sorrow. Often in the midst of festivities, there is a place of happiness. And right underneath it, there is a heavy heart. And as you look around, particularly in this hour, we see that. That people are masking and covering and putting this bandage on circumstances by trying to drown out what they're going through because they desire happiness. They're desiring this joy. And that joy only comes from the Spirit of the living God. 
And so they can never really obtain it, but they can cover that hurt, that discouragement, that depression for a day or an hour. They have to drown it out by doing this and that. But you and I are not held captive to that. That's not the way we walk. We walk by a higher way. And we are meant to be filled with that joy that is not dependent or dictated to by what we're going through. What's going on on the earth, whether it's a difficult season or a good season, we are filled with His joy. That joy always is our strength and leads us to victory because we know that we stand in the place of victory because of Him. In Romans 14, verses 17 through 18, it says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he in this way serves Christ, is acceptable to God and approved by men. Our worship, our service on this earth is meant to be filled with that joy, that joy that comes from the Holy Spirit by being a secret place dweller. Not somebody walking through this life miserable, discouraged, and depressed. So I pray, so God, that this message would bring you to a place of breaking through by His mighty hand. That as you open the Word, it would so revive you and revive that joy that belongs to you. It is the fruit of the Spirit. And that the Holy Spirit abides in us to the place of the overflow, and we've learned how to yield and surrender, then there should be an abundance of joy, regardless of what we're going through. Smith said, but, the, but Christians have this. It is a joy without alloy, without a mixture. It is an inward expressive, and it comes from the spirit man, not from the soul arena, not from our imagination, not from our emotions. So it's not held captive to them, but it is something spiritual. And it comes from the Holy Spirit infused into us as we yield and surrender and allow Him to so work. Smith went on to say, It rises higher and higher until, if it has its perfect order, we will be drowned everything with a shout of praise coming from His holy presence. And it desires to bring forth a shout. It desires to cause something to arise in you because you stand in the place of victory. So when the enemy is surrounding you, attacking you, trying to discourage and depress and hold you captive, there's something that's stirred on the inside of you. That joy rises up and causes you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Strong in the Lord, because I know Him and I know my position in Him. I know that I'm an heir and co-heir. I know that He already won the victory. So as I see what the enemy's trying to do, I proactively get and I'm able to shout and stand and declare, no, I'm able to make that stand so these walls must come down because God has already given the city into our hands. Smith went on to say, we want everyone to receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has the very blessed expression of the Lord in His glory, in His purity, in His power, in all His blessed words. In that secret place, as you surrender, the Holy Spirit, as He fills you, as you yield to Him, begins to reveal and express Him with the Jesus and His victory in the fullness of His glory. And there's a weight to it. <clears throat> as I come into His presence, there is a worship. As I see Him and I begin to realize how great He is, He's got to become bigger in our life. We've got to understand that we come into the secret place of the Most High. Not the sort of high, not the, you know, God who has some victories, but He's the Almighty One. He is more than enough. He is greater. He is the greater one. And so that worship arises as I see Him the way He is. I begin to glorify and lift up His name. I think of the Our Father. And that Jesus explained as we come into that prayer, Our Father, how would be His name? It's not just meant to be a how would be His name, but that's meant to be then a process where we stand and we begin to just worship and lift up His name. I believe more time and more attention should be given to the worship and the lifting up of His name. Because as you receive Him is what you receive from Him, and then that determines what you're able to give. And we have so limited our God. We have made Him smaller. We've made Him too small. And He's bigger. He's greater. I encourage you to go outside and look up and then look at Psalm 19 
and how the heavens declare His glory. As you look up, there's more up there than there is here. He is so much bigger. He is so much greater. And uh, the government, the authority, the power is on His shoulders. He is Lord over all. And He is in us and He's for us and He's with us. So we can stand in His presence in the place of victory. We are in this world, but not of it. We're passing through. Passing through with a purpose and a message to show to this generation His glory. Because they need it to demonstrate His joy because the world longs for it. And the only way they're going to see it is through you, through your witness, demonstrated in the most difficult, challenging times where you stand not with a happiness because that happiness will break, that happiness will fail, but His joy, His joy is always strong enough. It's able to overcome and it's uh, greater than whatever is thrown at you. Smith said this, and this, oh, this is secret place dwelling. He said, no wavering. This is the principle. He who believes is definite. And because Jesus is in it, it will come to pass. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which is Hebrews 13.8. They that are poor in spirit are heirs to all. There is no limit to the power, for God is rich to all who call upon him. Not the will of the flesh, but God. Put your claim for your children, for your families, for your co-workers, that they may be sons brought to glory. Hebrews 2.10 For it is all on the principle of faith. This place of being definite. This place of knowing. This place of security. Because you're looking not at promises that sound good. Promises that are nice and encouraging. But they are promises that are absent and they're in you and they are bigger in you. As you begin to lift Him up, as you begin to worship Him, as you receive Him for who He is, you receive from Him. So now you receive those promises that carry an authority and they carry with it the victory. And you're able to see because faith comes by hearing or receiving. And of course, receiving by the Word as it is, as it is breathed on by the Holy Spirit and you see it. Smith went on to say, all these things are coming for forcefully through as the Holy Spirit is able to witness to you of Him. And every time the Son is manifested in your hearts by the Holy Spirit, you get a real stream of heavenly glory on earth. Joy in the Holy Spirit, not in eating and drinking, but in something higher, something better. Think about that for a minute. In the secret place of His presence, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal Jesus to you in all his glory and there's a weight to it that begins to come on you it begins to touch you and you see him in his glory uh, his greatness who he really is how he's so much bigger you see him as the almighty one uh, the most high one in the fullness of that and it causes something on the inside of you to break and to change smith said we all enjoy eating and drinking but there's something higher, something better, something more substantial. And it's joy in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can bring this joy to us. You know, I look at, as believers, we have perfected the eating and drinking. But we have not learned how to perfect the joy. Not just a touch or an encounter, but a lifestyle of joy in the Holy Spirit. A lifestyle where that joy becomes our strength. So that in this late hour, in the midst of these trials and difficulties, you have the strength to stand. So that when the pressure's on, you're not moved by the pressure, but you have a joy because you know how big and how great your God is. You know the victory is already won and that these circumstances must bow. These situations must change because of the authority that you have in Christ through Him. In James 1, Verses 2 through 4. Think about this. Consider it all joy, brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and that endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. As you get a hold of the joy of your Lord in the midst of the trial, and you stand with that joy, it's fully pervaded in that definite position of victory, knowing the victory is won in Him, through Him, and as I yield and surrender, 
that victory will manifest. I have a shout. See, I look at the story of Jericho and how God had to have them walk around that city for six days. And then the seventh day, they walked around. And on the seventh, the shout came forth. But during that time, they're not focused on the city. They're focused on the presence. They're looking to the ark. And God wants us to come and take that time and allow there to be an exchange in the secret place where he gets bigger in us. The victory grows in us until we know that we know that we know. And we're able then to stand. And when everything comes up, the world, the flesh, and the devil, declaring trials and tribulations that say, we are going to defeat you. We're greater than you. You look not at your natural ability, but you look at his ability. And in that place of surrender, you say, God, my God is able. The children of Israel couldn't bring down the walls of Jericho. They couldn't overcome that fortress. But God did it. How can a shout bring down walls? How can such a thing cause a breakthrough? Because God did it. And God wants to bring you to a place where that is not some nice story, but that's a fact in you. And that you realize that your God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What He did for them, He can do for you. And He will do it through you for His glory. Smith said this, Only one like the Master could stand and say, Count it all joy. When they are scattered everywhere, driven to their wit's end, and persecuted. So that in the worst, most difficult, darkest hour, when you're going through it, and you don't know how, there's a joy. Because that joy comes from His presence, because you abide in the secret place. You have made that. That is your positioning in life. You need to learn how to proactively take that position so that when you face this life, you take the position as a secret place dweller. And as a consequence, there is a joy in you, there is a strength in you, and there is a shout that comes from the knowing in Him, from that confidence in Him. God wants us to see, Smith said, that every obstacle, every obstacle can be moved. God brings us into a place where the difficulties are where the pressure is, where the hard corner is, where everything is so difficult that you know there's no possibilities on the human side. God must do it. Think about it. God bring you to this place because the victory is already won. See, we run in fear of that. But God wants you to pass the test because it's not by your might, but by His hand. And He wants you to see the victory already won. He wants you to understand that you can face tomorrow because of Him. You can face every trial knowing victory is already won. So that it's not the situation no longer dictating to you, holding you captive, but Him. And the victory already won. The Word living in you, a fire in your boats. And as a consequence, there's a joy. Because you know what's coming. You see things differently. And you think differently because you've received Him. How you receive Him determines what you receive from Him, determines what you give, what comes out of you. Count it all joy, Smith said, when you fall into diver te temptations. James 1, 2, we re read that. Perhaps you've been counting it all sadness until now. Never mind. You turn the scale and you get a lot out of it, more than you had ever before. Tell it to Jesus now. Express thine inward throbbings to Him. See, it all starts by us proactively coming into the secret place of His presence. And there has to be an exchange. You cannot face tomorrow. You can't face today in your strength or your abilities, in your happiness. You've got to have an exchange. I've got to recognize my weakness. I've got to recognize my inabilities and recognize that I need to get a hold of Him and get His joy, get His victory. There has to be an exchange in me. Psalm 30 verse 5, Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. There's a shout. And that shout, Smith said, you know, there's a shout that a man makes and there's a shout that makes the man. And so many of us want to make a lot of noise and think that authority is demonstrated in the loudness of our voice. We think if we shout louder, somehow it would change things. But there's a shout that comes from a knowing, a shout that comes from an encounter, a shout that comes from that definite position 
in him where I know the victory is won. A shout that is filled with joy and a shout that dares to say to the devil, as we'll discover in the face, it is won. And he must bow. See, I look at the temptations that Jesus went through. The devil brings up the word. And the devil wants to debate the word with you. But Jesus did not debate it with him. Jesus came from the position of authority and spoke that word with absolute authority to which there was no debate. There was no discussion because what he said was clear and it carried victory. Smith went on to say, Who wants anything from God? He can satisfy every need. He satisfied the hungry with good things. I believe a real weeping would be good for us. You are in a per way if you cannot weep. I don't thank God, I sorry, I do thank God for my tears. They help me so that I do like to weep in the presence of God. I ask you in the name of Jesus, will you cast all your care on him? For he cares for you. I am in great need this morning. I do want an overflow. Come on, beloved, let us weep together. God will help us. Glory to God, how he meets the need of the hungry. I believe there has to be an exchange where there's that baptism of tears where we proactively come. Stop waiting and reacting to situations so that the situations have the louder voice. So the situations have had the opportunity to speak to you and give you the bad report but proactively get into the secret place and receive the report of heaven. There cast your care. There let the weeping occur, so that in the morning, when the, the enemy comes, you already have the victory. You already have the shout, because I've wept through the night. And that place of surrender, I have poured out and cast it all upon the Lord. I have made it all known to the Lord. I have yielded it all and surrendered it. And I have now received from him that victory. I have received from him the shout of joy that comes in the morning. So that now it's a new morning. It's a place of victory. It's a place where I'm not looking according to the natural. See, I love Paul. And you look at the story what Paul went through. Yet he would declare, despite all that persecution and everything, that it was a light temporal thing, producing a greater weight of glory because he didn't see it from an earthly perspective, but a heavenly one. A one, a place where he's already got into the secret place and proactively received that victory so that he faces it from the heart share and the mind share of knowing the victory won in Christ. So he knows and he's already received and he's attacking uh, from heaven's perspective and from the authority of the word. Smith said it's a great place. It's a great place of dignity, being able to shout unto God when the walls are up and it looks like it will fail. Shout, shout, the victory is ours. The victory is yours. It's not, it's not to come at some future time. The victory is yours. As you shout with the voice of triumph, the ensign will arise and the walls will fall. You will walk in and possess the city. It's designed to position. It's not of your making. It's a rising positioning, honoring the cry of the master. It is finished, not it is to be finished. See, we get that revelation in the secret place because the Holy Spirit speaks it to us, reveals it to us personally that it is finished, not that it will be finished. See, that's the message on the earth, is that it's not over yet. The victory's not won yet. You could still lose. And he likes to present facts, and other things that so suggest and paint such a picture of defeat that you look at next year, you look at what's coming, and it depresses and it discourages you. But as a secret place dweller, I'm looking higher. I'm looking at something greater. And I'm looking not at these light temporal things, but at the far greater weight of glory, of the joy inexpressible, the joy that is my strength. Don't lose your joy. Because your joy is what enables you to stand. Don't get discouraged and depressed, but proactively get into the secret place and cry out and seek him. If you've got to spend all night, spend all night, but get a hold of him until you have won the victory so that you face tomorrow with him. You face it in his strength and his might, knowing, and with that place of knowing, 
the victory is won and that it is finished. Smith went on to say, how can I have that? Oh, you can have that as easy as anything. Can I? Yes, it is simple as, as one, two, three. How? Let heaven come in. Let the Holy Ghost take possession of you. And when he comes into your body, you will find out that it is the keynote of the spirit of joy and the spirit of rapture. And if you allow the Holy Ghost to have full control, you will have, sorry, you will, you are living in the spirit and you will find out that the opportunities will be God's opportunities. And there's a difference between God's opportunities and ours. So that, listen, that trial, that difficulty is no longer mine, but it is an opportunity for God to demonstrate his faithfulness in and through me. I just have got to get out of the way. And that is done by proactively getting into the secret place and seeking his face and giving it to him. Don't wait. If you have, well, let's repent and let's build a lifestyle of going after him. Don't wait any longer, but seek his face and let the Holy Spirit get in you, fill you, and produce something in you that demonstrates and reveals the word of victory. Smith said this, real faith has perfect peace and joy, and a shout at any time, it always sees the victory because it knows it in the secret place of its presence. It has looked in his face. It has looked at the nail-pierced hands. It has seen him sitting on the throne. It has seen him in his majesty and his holiness and his purity and his absolute authority. It has seen him and you get a revelation how he upholds all things. How he is the God who called things that be not as though they were. Who knows the end from the beginning. And how he speaks and declares this is what's happening. This is what's going to happen. My hand is mighty. That brings me. This is where we're going to finish. Because if you will get this. You will not face the situation repeating what the enemy is saying, declaring in a depressed and discouraged way what the situation is dictated to you, held captive. Oh, how the enemy loves to come on Fridays with the bad word, the bad report, and how it destroys your weekend, how it holds you captive and steals every ounce of happiness and peace. But because you're a secret place dweller, you are different. And the world needs to see a generation, a people that are different, forged in the fire of his presence, filled with his joy that is such a strength, knowing the victory won, now facing it, and out of their mouth does not come a repeating of, a confirming of their problem or their difficulty, but a declaration of the victory and a shout, as Smith would say, you must learn to take the victory and shout in the face of the devil, it is done. There is no man who can doubt if he learns to shout, so that you don't just passively say, I agree with this, but you take a hold of it and you run to the battle and you dare declare it. You dare stand up and say, this is so. You dare challenge the narrative and you no longer receive what the situation is saying, but you declare, this is so. This is what I've laid hold of in the secret place. This is the truth that the word has revealed to me and I declare it. I receive it and I speak it out. It becomes your confession of faith, that which is bold in you and you hold fast that confession. Amen. Oh, I pray this word is blessing, encourage you, provoking you in the name of Jesus. And you're getting hold of some victories today. You're daring to step up and receive what he has and daring to decree what he has and stop receiving what the enemy's giving. But get a hold of that boldness that comes from the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, and lay a hold of that victory one and let it come forth out of your mouth in a shout, not in the loudness, but in the clarity of authority speaking to every circumstance, every symptom, telling it it must bow. Every mountain must move because it must be so, because God says so. Whatever we bind in earth must be bound in heaven. Well, in the secret place, I know what heaven's bound. I know the will of my Father, and as the Father says or reveals in the Our Father, your will be done on this earth. I grab a hold of it, and I want to see it birthed in my situations and circumstances. Amen. Oh, I thank you for listening. I pray this has blessed you. If it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe. 
In doing so, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google. I want to see more believers living boldly in these last days. We need to stand up with the victory and stop receiving the depression and discouragement of this hour. God is coming, Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, a victorious church, a group of people that are overcoming, not undergoing. Let us lay hold of the word. Let us press in that we may know him with an intimacy. And in that knowing of him, stand strong, stand bold in this hour. Amen. I also pray, would you consider joining our prayer partnership team? You can go to robertpairs.org and to the partner page. It costs you nothing. We believe strongly in the importance of a prayer foundation because I believe that through prayer we get the right word birthed in season. Through prayer that word has the impact and I can demonstrate the proof of that. I believe as a partner that you share in the reward when we stand before the Lord for all the lives touched and changed. Just look at some of the testimonies and you can see. We don't ask for money. I believe that God will stir hearts of people to be financial partners. It takes a lot of money, and it's going to take more money for what we're about to do. But I trust that God moves on the hearts of people, and we make a statement by faith. This ministry, I want to be a testimony of God being the Lord our provider, that He meets all of our needs if we seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. Amen? So I thank you for listening. Please check out more in the Secret Place series. And in this hour, lay hold of the fact that this is the day the Lord has made. It may look like the enemy has the upper hand. It may look like things are getting worse, but we arise and shine because this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because of, through, and for Him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.